Hi everyone and welcome to A Stitch in Time. Today is Thursday, May 4th, 2023. So may the 4th be with you to all the Star Wars fans out there. Uh, this is episode 253. My name is Carol. I'm known as Knits and Pearls on Ravelry and I live east of Vancouver in the Fraser Valley of British, British Columbia, Canada. I hope you're all doing well and that you've had a good three weeks since we last spoke. Yes, it has been three weeks and what a three weeks it has been. We have been in the midst of kitchen renovations, but I'm happy to say that the end is in sight and things are about 96% mm, completed. I thought it would be fun to record in here today, not only does it give you a fresh new background to look at? But also the lighting in here is fantastic. If there's one thing this kitchen does not lack, it is lighting. I have a ton of things to talk about this week, so um, better get comfortable. Uh, grab yourself something to drink and settle in because it's going to be a long one. Not that you have to watch it all at once. Honestly, it is a rare thing that I watch any of my favorite podcasts from beginning to end in one sitting. Usually I watch them in dribs and drabs. And you know what? I'm never going to know if you do the same. Uh, before I show you all the knitting and yarny goodness, I have some winners to announce. Uh, we have a couple of make-alongs that are taking place in the Ravelry group. There's a year-long make-along called Another Year of Stash that is super easy to participate in. All you have to do is join in the chatter and uh, you have a chance to win a monthly prize. Um, the other make-along is a little bit more involved and um, has a little bit, has a few more rules to it. That is the Yarn of the Month Club, in which we endeavor to uh, either knit, crochet, weave a special skein of yarn, or spin a special braid or bump of fiber every month. You have one month to get going and then another month to finish up. Just a word about that one. If you want to qualify for prizes, make sure you do a starting post in the first month of the make along and that you uh, do an FO post when you're finished and reference your starting post. Um, and also make sure you're only entering one item. I had to disqualify a couple of, of projects, unfortunately, this month. Okay, um, first winner for the Another Year of Stash Chatter thread uh, for April. I drew from posts 523 to 663. Random number generator chose post 548. That is Turtle Four Cats, who is Amanda from Texas. So congratulations, Amanda. Um, and thank you for taking part in the make along. And then the March winner for the Yarn of the Month Club, there were 11 qualifying entries. Random number generator chose number eight, and that is Junie also, who is June from Newfoundland. So congratulations to you, June, and thank you for taking part in the Yarn of the Month Club. Both winners uh, will receive up to $20 US in patterns that are giftable on Ravelry. So uh, private message me with the patterns that you would like and I will get those into your inbox as soon as I can. All right, I have several finished projects. I'd better if I've been gone that long, right? <laughs> Uh, first up are my community socks. Um, here they are, nice bright colors. Uh, these are a top-down 64 stitch plain vanilla sock uh, knit from uh, Fiber Nymph Dye Works Mountain Tweed BFL in the community colorway. And uh, this was a special skein that was dyed up for qualifying um, participants in last year's um, 
Miomel, make it your own make along in the fiber note dye works group. So I'm going to bring this a little bit closer. I'm realizing even though there's lots of light in here, I'm not sure if it's showing up the yarn and stuff as well as it does in my craft room. So this might not be a place I record going forward, but it's kind of fun for today. Anyway, uh, as you can see, two by two rib and then these fun, fun colors. Did a traditional heel flap and gusset, my usual rounded toe. So not much more to say about those. Um, very happy to have finished those up though. All right, one down. <laughs> uh, my second finished project is another pair of socks. These were knit from Sweet Fiber Yarns, the Super Sweet Sock in the Autumn Day colorway. Um, and it is the, um, I forgot, to, oh, I think they're called the Cozy Autumn Socks. I was gonna say, I forgot to write down the pattern. It's a pattern by This Handmade Life. And uh, this was part of last year's uh, fall sock club from Sweet Fiber. There, if I bring that up closer, you can get a look at that lace pattern and the beautiful variations in the yarn. I don't remember where I was on these last time I recorded. I do know that I wasn't sure, whoops, I'm shaking the camera, sorry. Um, I do know that I wasn't sure if I was going to be doing a traditional heel flap and gusset or a short row heel because I didn't want to interrupt the way that the yarn was knitting up, but I decided to give it a go and try a uh, heel flap and gusset. And even though there is some pooling around the, let's see if I hold it there, is that any better? Not really. There's a window right here, so hopefully that helps. Uh, even though there is some pooling around the gusset area, which often happens with hand dyed yarns, it wasn't distracting enough for me to reject that method of heel. And as it turned out, they kind of ended up opposite. Uh, so the light kind of showed up on this side on both and then the darker on that one. So they're kind of symmetrical in their imperfection. <laughs> um, and anyway, that part is gonna be in my shoe for the most part, so no one's gonna see it. Anyway, I'm really happy with how these socks knit up. They were part of my own personal sock yarn club for this year. At the beginning of the year, I chose 12 skeins of yarn from my stash, many of which were club uh, colorways from a couple of different uh, sock yarn clubs. And I had my husband kind of put them into bags and randomly number them. And so this was, I think, bag number three. Um, and it's a great way to kind of make you knit with some of the yarns that you might otherwise just tuck away and hold on to. So that's been a fun thing. Um, I'm also making these for the Fiber Nymph Dye Works make along for this year, which is the Stop Shooting On Yourself Mel. And that the aim of that is to work on some things that you really want to work on, not that you should. And um, they kind of, you know, fall into that category. As does the next finished project. So um, that is my March Yarn of the Month Club. Oh no, April Yarn of the Month Club. Yes, April, yes, April. <laughs> oh boy. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, it was definitely April because I knit this shawl from a special skein that came from a knitting friend of mine. It was from Caterpillar Green, which is now Gage Dye Works. This is the um, MCN fingering in the shawl stripe, um, and it was called April Showers. So that's why I did it for my April project. 
So this is the, I didn't write this down either, Stormy Sky Shawl by uh, Life is Easy. And it was an easy, easy project to knit up. So you start in one corner and you do a series of garter, sti garter stitch stripes, some elongated stitches, and some eyelets. And then you just repeat those four stripes all the way through and the shawl gradually gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So I'm gonna see, I don't have a lot of room behind me. I'm going to push the chair back or at least stand up. See if I can show it to you, the whole thing. Ah, oh, yeah, there we go. So it is a nice big shawl. Uh, this shawl skein um, is, was the equivalent of one and a half skeins of yarn. So approximately, I don't know if it was exactly 150 grams, uh, somewhere in the neighborhood. And I was able to, I don't have my notes here um, in front of me. I think I ticked them off though. Yeah, I was able to work up to row 290 on the pattern. And then I also added, um, I just finished with some extra garter stitch rows and bound off and I had very, very little yarn left over. So I used up pretty well the whole, <laughs> my pencil just about rolled off the table. Um, yeah, I used up pretty well the whole skein. So um, I'm not gonna wear it. I'll put it on like that for now just to show you, but it's too warm. Spring has arrived. It's almost like summer. It's kind of crazy, we went from cold and wet to super hot um, and now we're kind of back to medium and then it's gonna rain tonight and we're gonna be back to cooler or wetter weather. But um, we have had a little bit of sunshine um, and I don't dare complain because I've been whining about the <laughs> cold and wet for so long. Uh, yesterday was like perfect, it was about I think 20, mid 20s, which would be sort of um, mid to high 70s for Fahrenheit. And um, we were at a uh, ball game last night. It was like perfect weather for ball. You could, you know, sit there in your short sleeves and, sun, you know, had sunglasses on. It wasn't too hot, it wasn't too cold. It was just perfect. Anything more than about 25 is too hot <laughs> for me. All right, I have um, one work in progress that you've seen before, and I'm happy to say I've made a lot of progress on this, and I have some motivation to finish it up, which I'll talk about in a little bit. So I'm just looking, oh, I am so ill-prepared. I don't have my ball bands here. Um, I am knitting the Cullum Tee by Isabel Kramer. I'm knitting it from Sweet Georgia Yarns, I know I did write it down, uh, Flaxen Silk Fine in the Cauldron colorway. And I will have inserted a picture of what it's supposed to look like. And um, here's mine. Oh. The lighting's definitely not as good as I thought it was going to be in here. Oh well. Uh, you can see I've done quite a bit since I showed it to you last. Um, I think I had split for this or joined the body and done a little bit from there and I've done quite a bit more. I have about I think about two to three inches more to knit in just plain stockinette um, and then there's a little bit of lace detail in the front at the uh, bottom, uh, just before the hem, and then a few more rows and cast off. So uh, that shows you the lace pattern a lot better there. Uh, I really like this. I had begun it 
uh, in a larger size and when I got to a certain point I tried it on and it was very large uh, because my gauge is looser than it's supposed to be. I am not knitting it in the called for yarn. Um, so I decided to drop down, I think I'm doing, doing the smallest size now, but I kept my gauge the same because I liked that airiness of the fabric. And um, yeah, I tried it on a couple days ago, I think. Put a little cami underneath and um, I really like how it's turning out. So I did it a little bit differently. I didn't mention this before. You're supposed to cast on along the shoulders and then you uh, work some short rows at the back, then you cast on the other side and you work some short rows, then you join the two little back sections and work down, I think, to the bottom of the sleeves. And then you pick up along the shoulders and do the same thing for the front. And once you get down to where you're supposed to join it, you join it in the round and work from there. The first time around I did it that way. Um, the second time around I decided to try doing a um, Judy's Magic cast on and kept my shoulder stitches on um, like a spare a, a needle or a stitch holder until it was time to use them. And so I don't have any seam at all at the shoulder, it's just joined. Um, because this yarn is quite light, I think that's okay. If I was knitting a heavier garment, I think I would like the stability of having a cast on edge. Um, but for this purpose, um, I think it works just fine and it was just a little bit less weaving in to do and just a little bit easier to pick up. Um, this has just a very simple kind of ribbing detail on the side. And once I joined in the round, well, first of all, I knit the front on with one skein of yarn and the back with another. And then once it got to where I joined it in the round, I started alternating skeins. And I'm doing that just along the side seam. I'm when I get to the side, I'm dropping one and picking up the other and just making sure that they're, you know, twisted so that there's no holes. Now I am finding, um, which made me think about talking about, I don't know if you can see, it's a little bit uneven in some places, but I'm pretty sure that's all gonna kind of block out once it's done and no one's gonna notice. Um, I'd say this side where I'm not doing that is a little more even along the edge. But it's one of those little teeny tiny things that no one but me is really going to notice. And now you know about it because I've told you. <laughs> All right. A couple of other projects um, that I have cast on since I last recorded. I had finished my plain stockinette socks and I could not resist casting on some new yarn that I showed you last time. And it's from Gage Dye Works again. Um, there's their label. The um, colorway is called Whiskey in a Teacup. And um, it is their Merino Twist Fingering, which is an 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon. Um, and this is their classic stripe. I have been drawn to this colorway forever and I um, finally got my hands on some. And it's a good thing I did because I, I think it was last episode when I was doing show notes, I went back to the website and it wasn't available anymore. So I just must have hit an update or something. Um, Anyway, I have started just a pair of plain stockinette socks, top down, two by two rib, two millimeter needle, just my sort of usual vanilla sock recipe. Uh, there's one striping repeat, and I have done the same amount on the second sock. 
and oh how I love this yarn. It's really soft and I just think the colors are so pretty. So happy to have started those. I think I keep shaking. I've got the my phone set up on a stand, set up on a box on the kitchen table and it's not as steady as it could be. <laughs> There's no whiskey in uh, my teacup, just some black tea. <laughs> and I also have a second pair of socks. Um, these were uh, part of my, these are part of my personal sock yarn club. I drew out bag number four and I was really happy to see what I chosen. Um, let me just find my label here. This yarn is from uh, Art Feel. Um, Art Feel. Uh, this is Bell, which is a sock, oh, well, obviously it's a sock yarn. It's my personal sock yarn club. I'm just trying to see what it's made from. It's also an 8020 Superwash Merino Nylon. Um, and this is the Rabbit Hole colorway. And um, I bought this, I think, online from Beehive Wool Shop in Victoria. And at the time, I also bought this mini skein, which they call Tiny Bell. And this is the Cabernet colorway. So it's a 20 gram mini. Again, lighting not as great as I thought it was gonna be. That's too bad. Anyway, I was so excited to, to pull this out because I've wanted to knit with this yarn for a long time. But it proved challenging to knit with. So if you see it in the skein, it's like a really nice mix of these purples and golds. And I was thinking that it might knit up in a micro stripe, just with the way the dye was done on the skein. Um, so I decided I was just, I cast on 64 stitches, I did a two by two rib cuff, and then I just started knitting. But what I discovered is that one side of the sock was ending up gold, and the other side was ending up purple. The colors were not striping or spiraling. They were just knitting up in this block, these blocks of color. And so I um, decided to switch it up. And what did I do first? I think I, I think I decreased to 60 stitches and I, well, that might not have been the first thing I did. <laughs> I tried a few things. One of the things I did was decide to, um, to do 60 stitches on a 2.25 millimeter needle and that did change how the yarn was knitting up. Um, so, it started knitting up like this. I'm not sure how well you can see, but in these bigger stripes. I wonder if it would help if I turned out these lights. Let me try that and see what happens. Not sure if the backlighting is blowing things out. I think that's better. Anyway, I also wondered, sorry, this is not my best episode. Sorry, um, not great lighting. I keep bumping the camera, but you know what? I am pretty sure you'll forgive me. So anyway, I then I thought, well, how would it knit up with, say, um, a pattern like monkey? Because often, 
this uh, notice just came up on my phone. <laughs> Squirrel. Anyway, I wondered how it would make up with, um, if I went back to 64 stitches with a two millimeter needle, but did like a pattern like monkey, which kind of breaks colors up. I wondered if that would work. It didn't really. Um, it did a little bit, but it didn't really. So then another pattern I tried was, um, cause I didn't really know if I just liked that plain stockinette, which is why I kept looking for other solutions. So one pattern I tried was for these Clupia or Clupia socks by Very Busy Monkey. And they are kind of a chevron-y pattern with alternating stripes of garter stitch and stockinette stitch. And I tried them with um, 64 stitches on a two millimeter needle. And even though they were knitting up okay, uh, the, they were too tight. And the pattern does say that because of the nature of how these are knit, you might want to size up. So then I tried again with a uh, 72 stitch cast on. And those are striping up more. I'm liking them better. Although I'm not loving them. They still are um, a little bit, I can get them on over my heel. I'm only gonna be able to knit them so long because they're not gonna stretch enough to go over the fullest part of my calf. And I'm just not convinced I wanna do them. Um, the whole sock like this. It's an easy pattern. Uh, literally, it's each section is like a two row repeat. So it's not, they're not difficult. I'm just not convinced this is the right pattern for this yarn either. Um, I think it works with the yarn, don't get me wrong. I think it's a good match of pattern and yarn. I just don't know if it's what I want. And I've liked this yarn so much that I really wanna be happy with what I make from it. Um, there is a possibility that I'm going to talk about in a little while, but for the meantime, I'm just going to let these kind of marinate and uh, I, there's a chance I'll be frogging and trying again something new because I'm just not in love with them. And this yarn's so pretty, I really, really want to love what I make from them from the yarn. Um, I think, oh no, there's one more work in progress that I worked on over the last three weeks and that is my blanket of cheer. So I did up one completely new block. This colorway is Apple Turnovers, which was part of a Fiber Nymph Dye Works uh, club. Um, and then the solid or the tonal is one of the minis I got as part of the Fiber Nymph Dye Works um, mini holiday mini countdown collection last year. Uh, so this whole blanket, if you are new, if you're new, welcome and don't take this as a typical episode. I'm kind of discombobulated today, feeling a little rusty. Um, I am making an entire blanket out of my holiday collection from Fiber Nymph Dye Works and the leftovers from all of the self-striping yarn that I've, uh, of her yarn that I have um, knit with over the years. And, um, and then this, I started out with Kay Jones' um, Stitch in Time blanket as a starting off point. And then I um, used her formula for the mitered squares and everything else has been sort of my own, my own thing. Um, so there's that one, which was brand new. And then I put the borders on 
three more. So this was the chickadee colorway that was from another of the yarn clubs. Uh, this is one of my favorite colorways. The elves were in the eggnog Christmas colorway. And I don't know if you can tell, but there's some stalina in the striping part. And then this is um, community to match my um, community socks. So I have put this back away for, for now, and I've been working on other things, but that's the beauty of this type of project. You can pull it out whenever you're just wanting a little something different to work on for a while, and um, you know, tuck it away when you're ready to work on something else. My tea is getting cold, which is an indication of how long I've talked already. Now the microwave is just over there, but I'll, I'll, I'll wait. <laughs> uh, I have some acquisitions. Um, I decided um, after taking part in last year's Sweet Fibers, um, autumn and holiday sock clubs that I wanted to do a complete year. So I've signed up for the spring one and then when the summer one is made available, I'm going to, sorry, shaking it again. Um, when the summer one's available, I'm going to sign up for that too. Um, and then I'll have a whole year's worth of Sweet Fiber Yarns sock, uh, Sweet Fiber Yarns yarn, sock yarn. <laughs> I am so tempted to just stop recording and start all over again, but I'm not convinced it's going to be any better. And it's getting late in the afternoon, so I'm just gonna push on through. Um, so Melissa is a fairly local to me dyer, and I'm always happy to support her. Uh, look what a beautiful card she has. Her mom used to run 88 Stitches, which was a sort of, you know, relatively local to me yarn store, and I'm so sad that it's gone. All right, are you ready? Uh, put your sunglasses on. This is the first color. Look at that vibrant, vibrant yellow. This is called Electric Daffodil. And I thought my shirt, t-shirt was bright, but holy cow. Um, I'm not even sure if the camera is capturing just how bright that really is. Uh, very, very, very vibrant. Uh, this is a beautiful skein of this pinky purple. This one is called Tulip Pink. And all of these are on the Super Sweet Sock Base, which is also an 8020 Super Wash Merino Nylon. So you can see that one's kind of tonal. And then this one is called Hello Hyacinth. And that's just a perfect representation of a grape hyacinth, uh, which I actually have some blooming in my garden right now. So those will be fun to knit with. These might be part of next year's Personal Sock Yarn Club because um, if I do the Summer Club, then that's six more skeins. Uh, and it's kind of a fun way to, to knit them up because I get to open them and be surprised twice. Um, but the second time, you know, I make a real concerted effort to actually knit with them. All right, I hadn't really intended to buy more yarn, but uh, I was watching For the Fun of Knit with uh, Linda, and um, I'm still way back in, I think, 2021. <laughs> but she showed something made out of this yarn, or to show that she had the yarn, I can't remember, but it was uh, Friday Harbor. 
It's a yarn by Cascade, um, and it is a worsted weight yarn, which is 80% merino, 20% silk. And I have been looking for the perfect yarn to make this pattern with. This is Owen by Jennifer Wood. I have had this pattern printed out for a long, long time and have never found quite the right um, yarn for it. Here's another picture. Not the best, um, not the best printing job, but you get the idea. Anyway, this looked like it would be just the right yarn and I happened to find it um, on sale from a Canadian yarn store and um, sales over, so I won't even bother telling you, but um, yeah, I think that'll be perfect and I think I look good in turquoise. Um, the color is called Bright Turquoise. It's color 24. So I am looking forward to knitting that up. My final acquisition is this skein of hand spun from my daughter. She has recently taken up spinning and is spinning up a storm. And I am really honored to be the recipient of one of her first skeins. Uh, so she gifted this to me a couple of weeks ago. She said she wasn't uh, sure of the exact fiber content, but it is obviously a wool, um, kind of a bit, of on, um, bit on the rustic side. Um, I would say overall it's about uh, worsted to Aran weight and there's 53 grams here so I think there should be enough to make a hat. Um, she knows that red is my favorite color so this is right up my alley and I'm looking forward to knitting with it now that I've shown it to you. Uh, now uh, some of you will know her as Jessica, but she has recently started going by the name Iska, which is the Welsh version of Jessica. It's a nod to her um, Welsh heritage on my husband's side. Um, and she's also a prolific knitter and she um, is also a YouTuber. So you can find her on Ravelry as That Stitch and Witch and her YouTube channel is The Stitch and Witch and I will provide links to both of those. So uh, thank you again if you're watching. I really do love it. All right, up and coming. So as I mentioned, I'm going to be making Owen out of this um, Friday Harbor yarn. But before I do that, um, I am going to knit a different sweater and I'm going to use my May Yarn of the Month Club yarn. So these two gorgeous skeins are from Ching Fiber. And this one is Merino Single and this is Kid Mohair Silk and they are both in the Dew colorway. And I just love them. I am not sure how well all the colors show up but it's this beautiful shade of green and then there's some lavender in there too and almost a rosy color in some areas and I have been on the hunt for the perfect pattern for this yarn for a long time and so I thought if I put it into my yarn of the month club stash then I would be forced to uh, make something from it this year and find the right pattern well a little while ago I had this gorgeous sweater come across my path. Look at the yoke on that. This is called Ondos Blouse by Valentina Bogdanova. Probably saying that wrong. There's another gorgeous look at that yoke. Now, I only have one skein of each, 
and the pattern for my size calls for uh, one skein of this, so I'm good. Um, I have 50 grams of this. My size calls for 70, but I am hoping that if I do a short sleeved version, just leave off the sleeves, I'm hoping I'm going to have enough. Um, also, some people have made the entire thing just with a fingering weight yarn and omitted the um, mohair silk. And so I'm also thinking that potentially if I had to, I could maybe add some of this um, for the hem. Um, I'm gonna give it a go because I have to. I, I've looked and I cannot find another skein of this anywhere. Um, I think the color's been discontinued. I can't find anyone who has it in stock. I can't even find this colorway on Ravelry to see if anyone has it in their stash. So I'm forced with whatever I do, this is all I've got. But I'm gonna give it a go and see what happens. Um, but I am making myself finish uh, my Cullum tea first. And so I am going to concentrate on that over the next few days. I should be able to finish it and then watch out. I am casting this on. Another thing is I'm going to be making the smallest size uh, because the size recommended for my uh, measurements has, I think, seven or eight inches of positive ease. And um, if you've been watching for a while, you know I prefer a more closely fitted garment. And so um, that will also hopefully save me a little bit of yarn. So wish me luck on that. Oh. And yes, I know um, I don't tend to use mohair or um, alpaca much because I am quite sensitive to it and if I do put it here even though this is like the softest stuff in the world um, I can still feel it a little bit but I'm thinking um, because most of it is going to be used in the body there are some stripes of it through the yoke but most of it's for the body and um, I'll be wearing a cami under it so I think I'll be okay um also up and coming, the first pattern from Helen Stewart's Handmade Sock Society was released today. Um, it's, they are called the um, Shadow Box Socks. Um, I don't have a picture, I haven't even really looked at the pattern. I just took a quick look at the picture. I noticed it had arrived in my Ravelry inbox just before I sat down to record. But it's a very simple lace sock. And um, the theme this year is like um, curiosity cabinets. And um, I just wasn't sure if I was gonna join this year. Um, I just can't quite see how I'm gonna fit six more pairs of socks into my plans for the year other than my, you know, the yarns that I've set aside and, and, and such. But then I thought, I think I'm gonna try them with my personal sock yarn club yarn. Um, as I mentioned, it is a lace pattern which should break up the pooling. So I'm gonna give them a try with this. Worst case scenario, it doesn't work and I find another pattern. Other worst case scenario is I put this yarn aside and knit it at a different time and move on to bag number five or else pick up a, pick out a skein, especially for the um, shadow box socks. It's my knitting. I'm the boss of my knitting. I, you know, the whole point of the make along that I'm taking part in is the stop shooting on yourself. Just because I put this as one of the skeins I wanted to knit with this year, and just because it was in bag number four and I opened it, doesn't mean I have to use it. And um, so I am not gonna make myself knit with it if it doesn't work out for these socks. I'll move on. 
um, which is really hard for me because I tend to be uh, someone who holds myself to the should things a lot. Uh, so, oops, sorry, shaking that phone again. Anyway, stay tuned. Um, maybe by next episode, I'll have a sweater started, a sweater finished, and maybe this, these will be, this, maybe this will be knit into a pair of socks that makes me happy. We'll see. Okay, on to life. So, um, yeah, life has been quite out of the ordinary for the past uh, month or more. Um, but I am happy to see uh, in the near future, life should return more to normal. Um, we have, uh, as you know by now, undergone an extensive uh, kitchen renovation. Uh, last Tuesday, the bulk of the work was finished. We did a walkthrough with the contractor and then we proceeded to move in. So um, all that's left to do is there's um, one little cupboard. They had measured the wrong size for the um, broom closet. And so they sort of separated the top from the bottom. They, they've got the bottom here. They had to reorder the top part. And it came in this week and it was scheduled to go in tomorrow, but um, I got a call just before I sat down to record to ask if they would, if we would mind if they postponed it to Monday, which uh, I don't at all. Um, it's a very minor thing. Um, I think all that's gonna go in it is uh, like, at this time is like garbage bags and maybe some cleaning products. We have homes for those in another closet already. It's not a big deal. The company was fantastic to deal with. Other than that, everything was done on time. Everything and more was done uh, to our specifications. Uh, the, this whole experience was so much easier than we imagined. And um, yeah, and we're just, thrilled with our kitchen. So um, once again, I sort of kept a little video diary of uh, all the things that got accomplished each day. And so I put that together and you can find that at the end of the episode if you're interested in seeing the transformation over the last week or so of construction and then uh, today I did one final tour with all of our things in place. It's uh, starting to feel like our kitchen. There was a point uh, during the renovation, I think it's when the cabinets first went in, and I walked in here and I thought, oh, what have we done? <laughs> this doesn't look like my kitchen and I, it, it just felt so foreign and um, just as every little bit got done and of course you know things grow on you you get familiar with your surroundings and now um, I love it we're very happy with it um, we're going to have our family over on the weekend to kind of break it in and I'm looking forward to showing it off to everybody um, and I think it's a really great kitchen for, you know, a party. And so um, we'll see if that's true. <laughs> and um, we'll plan on having uh, many more get togethers uh, as the year goes on. Um, yeah, just so happy after talking about it and saving for it for so long just to see everything come to fruition. And I wouldn't say it's exactly as I imagined it because going into it, I didn't really know what it would look like. Um, that kind of was a process along the way. Um, we had some recommendations or suggestions, maybe that's a better word, from our contractor and um, 
he really listened to our our wants and our requests are the things that we really wanted and um, made it happen and so yeah we're very 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 happy with it but that means um, that life should get back to fairly normal uh, pretty soon because I've yesterday the last few things that we had ordered came for things like the utensil holder and, and stuff like that so this kitchen, as far as I'm done, as far as I'm concerned, is done except for window coverings. We need to arrange to have someone come in and make suggestions for those and and uh, get those made up. But other than that, everything that's supposed to be in a cupboard is in a cupboard. Um, all the uh, decorations have been done. Um, just yeah, place for everything. Everything in its place. And so now all we have to do is live in here, and <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, so I should be able to record more regularly again. Uh, I should have more time for my crafting, although the garden has been sorely neglected, so I can see myself spending um, some time outside in the uh, coming couple of weeks trying to get a handle on that. Um, an update on Cameron, uh, he had his specialist appointment. He is going to have to undergo another procedure. Probably will happen in June, but we're still waiting for the uh, date. Um, in the meantime, he's doing great. And uh, he got back to playing ball last week, which thrilled him to no end. Um, and then uh, I missed that night. I was just uh, just not interested in going last week. It was a late game and I'd been uh, working in here all day, putting stuff away and I was, was tired. Uh, but I did go last night. Um, it was the perfect night for ball. It was just the perfect temperature and the sun was shining and it was really good to see everybody again. Um, so we have ball seasons back and we're part of it. In the meantime, uh, my granddaughter had been scorekeeping most weeks, so um, that was good. I wasn't, I didn't feel bad about not being there. Um, what else have we been up to? Last weekend, we went out for dinner. We had received a um, gift card uh, at Christmas time from our younger son and so we finally went and used that so it was nice to get dressed up a little and go out on a date and then the following day we celebrated um, spring birthdays which include both Cameron and I um, over at one of my sister's places and um, so that was lots of fun to get together she had like a bit of a Mexican fiesta theme going on and uh, even got a pinata that she hung up and um, we just had a really nice time. So it was three of my sisters and their spouses and us. Um, I think that's it as far as life stuff goes. Um, as I mentioned, this coming weekend, our kids and grandkids are coming over for dinner. And then um, the following weekend, my mom is going to be in town for my new great niece's baptism. And so um, us, uh, my sisters and brothers-in-law, we're all going to go out for um, Mother's Day brunch with her so that'll be nice. I don't um, often get to spend Mother's Day with my mom so it's always um, a real pleasure and privilege and great thing when I when I get to do that. Um, my something good for this week. So um, I had a bit of a predicament. We used to have um, our fridge just covered in magnets because we like to collect them, we like to pick them up when we travel, and we also like to receive them as gifts from other people who travel. 
Uh, but one decision we made with our new kitchen was that it was going to be a lot more minimalistic, a lot less cluttered. To be honest, I'm not even sure if we can put magnets on this fridge. Some stainless steel you can and some you can't, and I haven't tried. But in any case, we weren't going to do that. So I had a plan to uh, frame a piece of, of metal and hang it up in the office and put magnets on there instead. And then the other day I had this brainwave. Um, something just came across my path that day um, that made me realize that many whiteboards are magnetic, which I hadn't really thought of one way or the other before which got me thinking that maybe I can find a framed whiteboard and use that as my background. And sure enough, I uh, found one on Amazon. It was just the perfect size for the place I wanted to put it. And so I proceeded to uh, fill it with magnets and I knew at the time that it was not gonna hold all of our magnets. But what I ended up doing is putting all of the magnets that we have acquired um, uh, representing all of the different places that we've traveled with Cameron's work. We've been very fortunate to go on a number of cruises and um, other trips and act as hosts on them. And, um, and then very couple other special trips. Um, one in particular was Cameron's 25 years of employment, uh, we got to go on a Mediterranean cruise with other 25 year employees. And that was probably the, just the most amazing trip we've ever been on. So what I ended up doing is on that magnet, that whiteboard, I put all of those magnets. And then I'm thinking, what can I do with the rest of the magnets? Where can I put them? And I looked down and right underneath where I hung this whiteboard is a metal filing cabinet with one, one um, side that is exposed to the room. I was like, I know where the rest of the magnets are going. So that's exactly what I did is just put them on there. So um, that makes me very happy. Um, a couple of special things about it too. Um, one of my knitting friends had given me a Amazon gift uh, card for um, my birthday. And so I used that towards the whiteboard and another knitting friend uh, sent, recently sent me a magnet uh, from her trip to Australia. And um, as I told her, we had brought back the same type of magnets for um, to give as as gifts when we came back, um, but we had not kept one of those for ourselves. And so I've put that on our um, special magnet board because it definitely represents our trip to Australia. So uh, thanks to both of you. Um, here's a picture so you can see what it looks like. And I'll think of both of you every time I look at it. All right, that is it for this very long and very rusty, discombobulated episode. If you're still here or if you've come back, thank you for watching. I truly appreciate it. Um, uh, stay tuned if you are interested in seeing the uh, renovation videos um, and uh, yeah other than that uh, take care until I talk to you again I'm hoping it will be very soon and so um, yeah take care till then bye for now today's Tuesday it's day two of week four Unfortunately, no work got done yesterday, but today all of the cabinet doors got aligned and all of the handles got put on. Over in the bar area, the wine rack was installed. Also, uh, some mirror on the upper cabinet. Hello. You can see there are some wires hanging there. That's for a light. 
And then once the light goes in, this uh, wine glass holder will be installed. Here's a look at the pantry with all of the handles on. Uh, this corner of the kitchen still needs some work. We're still waiting for the upper cabinet for the broom closet. And then once it comes, this uh, cabinet over the fridge can be squared up. Right now, you can see the doors are not aligned as they should be. Uh, this is the area where the stove goes and today a uh, spice pull-up got installed. So that's over here to the left of the stove. So all of the spices, or at least a lot of the spices, will go there. And then once you're done with them, you just push them way out of sight. Love that feature. And then there's there the stove, or the sink, the space for the dishwasher. I just can't believe what a difference just having handles on everything makes. And tomorrow there's an even bigger change coming because the countertops are going to be installed. I cannot wait to see what it looks like after that. It's Wednesday, day three of week four, and a couple of things happened today. So first of all, the trim got put on around the window and doorways. And second, we got new countertops. I'll give you a bit of an overview. The backsplash goes on tomorrow. So there's a bit of a preview and also a close-up of the countertop. It is um, quartz. And then around the side, you can see the new sink. It is quite a bit deeper than our old one, so that'll take a little bit of getting used to. The plumber's coming tomorrow also, so by tomorrow night we should have a faucet and also a dishwasher in that hole. The electrician is also coming, so we may actually have lighting in here also by tomorrow night, which would be awfully nice. So some more major changes happening in the next 24 hours. It's late Thursday afternoon, day four of week four, and what a difference a day makes. We've learned that a lot through this process. So the cabinet guy was back today doing finishing touches. So all of the trim has been done on that far wall and elsewhere. So if I turn around, you will see that not only do we now have a dishwasher and a kitchen faucet, we also have backsplash. So the tile guy left just a short time ago. He'll be back either tomorrow afternoon or Saturday morning to do the grouting. I'll step back so you can see the finishing touches on all of these cabinets too, all the bottom trim and upper trim. We're still waiting for that corner cabinet, but the um, pantry's all done now. So tomorrow the electrician is coming and uh, hooking up all of that wiring to sockets and puck lights and pot lights in the ceiling. So hopefully by this time tomorrow, uh, tomorrow night we actually will have power in here and be able to see things by artificial light instead of natural light. It's Friday afternoon, day five of week four. Four. Let there be light. Uh, not all of the lighting or the electrical work got done today. Uh, the electrician wanted to wait until the tile was grouted and that is happening tomorrow morning. So the electrician will return on Monday and hook up the fan over the stove, the dishwasher, all the under cabinet and in cabinet lighting, the outlets and light switches, all the rest of the electrical will happen then. I have just finished touching up all the paint around the window and 
doors and oh, I had a near disaster. I knocked over the paint container and I was trying to grab it to upright it and ended up flipping it upside down, but right in the sink. <laughs> and so our brand new sink has been christened with paint. Uh, thankfully, I was able to scrub it all out and it looks as good as new. So next week, uh, supposedly on Monday, all the rest of the work is going to get done. So uh, cross fingers that that is the case. We're really anxious to move into our new kitchen. It's late Monday afternoon, day one of week five, and it has been a very busy day around here today. The electrician arrived about 7.30 this morning and there have been people coming and going all day, but a lot has gotten accomplished. You can see that our stairs got done today. They're all finished except for a cleaning and some silicone and they are a vast improvement over the plywood we've been looking at for the last, I don't know, six or seven weeks and the carpet before that. Um, we've been planning to do the stairs like this for about six years, uh, back when we had a flood in our downstairs and replaced all the flooring. And for one reason or another, it was never the right time and now they're done and I am thrilled. So let's go up those stairs into the kitchen and I'll show you um, what's been done in there. I'm really happy with how these turned out. Okay, let's go in the kitchen. First, I'll show you what still needs to be done. So I'm gonna turn around here. Uh, we're still waiting for the upper corner cabinet and it sounds like it's not going to be here until May which is not so far away if you think about it. Uh, they've gone ahead and installed the lower cabinet and the um, trim so that when it comes, they'll be able to just uh, pop it right in and then finish things up. And we're also waiting for a Lazy Susan for that bottom corner cupboard, but that's a pretty minor thing. It's certainly functional without it. All right, let's show you what's been done. So the Tile guy came on Saturday and grouted the backsplash. And then this range hood got installed today. You'll notice we have electrical sockets, under counter lighting, light switches. Uh, I've got a light over the kitchen sink now. You can see the lighting there. Dishwasher has been installed, it's ready to go. And if we go this way, you can see there's the pantry area and then the, the big wall. Uh, you can see the lighting's all been installed there too. And this cabinet is finished, complete with lighting and a rack for wine glasses. Uh, it turned out our wine glasses were actually too big for the rack and they were able to alter it to fit our uh, wine glasses. So that was awesome. I'll just turn around and so you can see, <sighs> skim by our messy living room <laughs> and just take a look at things from this angle. So we're almost done and we're right on schedule. Uh, aside for those things I already mentioned, everything's ready to go. Um, there's going to be someone that comes in tomorrow morning to clean and then they'll put the appliances into place and then we'll do a walkthrough with our contractor and just see if uh, everything is as it should be. So they are right on schedule and we just couldn't be more pleased with how everything has gone. So I'll do a final walkthrough once all of the appliances are in place. It is almost noon on Tuesday, day two of week five, and here I am standing in our nice clean kitchen. 
As you can see, the appliances have been put into place and everything has been cleaned from top to bottom. So before I start moving things in here, I thought I would give you one last look around. So to the right of the pantry there is the entrance into the living room. When Cameron gets home from work tonight, we'll move our kitchen table back in here where it belongs and we'll get our living room back. Uh, other than a couple of very minor things like the um, missing cupboard in the center of your screen, everything has gone uh, according to plan and according to schedule. In fact, today is the last day of our proposed schedule. The contractor came this morning and did a, a walk around with us. There were only a couple of really minor things and they've already been taken care of. So we are definitely ready to move in. <laughs> We're so happy with the final results and we um, were surprised at how relatively painless the whole process ended up being. You can see our bar fridge has now been put into place on this wall. I am anxious to start filling those cupboards and uh, putting some personal touches into our new kitchen. Not so eager about the process. There's a lot of boxes to unpack, but I am anxious to make this space our own. Um, the cooking dinner in here tonight. I don't know what I'm making yet, but I'm definitely using the stove because I've not used a stove in over a month. Um, thank you for coming along with me on this journey. Hope you've enjoyed it. And I think I'm going to find life awfully boring after this, but that's okay. Um, I think I'm ready for a little bit of boring. <laughs> It's the following Thursday and I've just finished editing the footage that you just saw. And while I was watching it, it really struck me that a house is not a home until it's been lived in. And we have spent the last nine days moving into this space and making it our own. So I thought it was only right that I give you one last look at this room. Um, as a living, working kitchen. So welcome to my home. I'm going to start here and save the best for last. So as you can see, we've moved our table and chairs back into the kitchen. Um, and we've put some things on the counters, but not too many because one of our goals is to keep our countertops as clutter-free as possible now that we have a place to put everything. So at this end, I've set up a bit of a telephone desk. Uh, these birthday cards will go away in a day or two, but it was a good spot to put them for a few days so we could enjoy them. I put the plants back on the windowsill along with a few of my favorite things. And then we've kept this area quite minimalistic with just a few essentials. So between there and this counter area over here, we have plenty of room for food preparation, which was sorely lacking before. So as you can see, we're still missing our corner cabinet, but that is being installed tomorrow. And once it is in place, then our kitchen will be about 98% mm, complete. Um, we still need to arrange for window coverings. Uh, not so much for privacy. As you can see, we don't have any neighbors for quite a ways back here. But that window and this patio door face east and we need something to block out the morning sun during the hotter part of the year uh, because this uh, upper floor gets quite warm in the summertime. Um, you can only see the mountains just peeking out over the clouds there. Normally we have quite a lovely mountain view out this window. So turning around, we'll come back to this area in a minute, but there's our pantry area. 
And originally this counter space was intended for food preparation and a sort of coffee bar, or more accurately, a tea bar since we don't drink coffee. But in the end, we decided that it was the perfect spot for our microwave and toaster oven rather than the counter opposite here. Uh, we tried them there and they just seemed to take up too much space and were quite bulky. Where here, they fit nicely into that cubby and are aligned with the uh, cabinets around them. So that turned out to be a good decision. So finally, my favorite part of this room, what I call the big wall or the far wall. I just love how this turned out. So on the left, you can see in the glass fronted cabinets, I put uh, some of the larger pieces from our china set and some keepsakes. And then um, I wasn't sure what I was gonna do with these center shelves. I don't consider myself much of a decorator, um, but I did envision putting some family photos and plants and keepsakes, and it took some trial and error, but I think it all came together pretty well. I'm not sure how well you can see. I think the lights, uh, it's a little bit dark, just tucked in there. And finally, I want to show you the bar cabinet, because this is really fun. So there it is. Now you would think looking at that cupboard, man, those guys drink a lot of hard liquor and liqueurs. And the truth is we don't really, but we have accumulated a lot over the years and I thought they would look really pretty reflected in the glass. And then this final touch, um, I received these wine glasses this past weekend for my birthday from one of my sisters. And they just have my name written all over them. And I just think they look beautiful hanging in this cabinet. So I'll just give you one final look. We have our living room back, yay! We've settled nicely into our new kitchen and we are looking forward to making many new happy memories in here, beginning this coming weekend when we host our family for dinner. So Thank you for coming along this journey with me. I hope you've enjoyed today's tour and seen the progress over the past several weeks. It's been quite an adventure.